this part of the free masterclass, we're going to animate one of my signature moves. I like using this animation because it's very energetic and beautiful. You're going to learn a lot, so buckle up and let's animate. And by the way, maybe we can call this the Ender animation. All right, so if you followed the previous part of this free course, we have made our transition with the can going over the screen. And now I'm going to bring back my plane. We're going to make another animation that I also used in my default cube video that a lot of people seem to love. Place this can on the ground of our plane. And I'm going to bring the camera down, I'm going to slide it backwards and let's see what this looks like for now. I'm going to use the several techniques that we've already learned in the previous parts. We're going to make a pop in effect have it skew over to the side. Then another one comes rolling in, but this time we are going to rotate it on the z-axis as well. We are going to alternate that. It pops in from this side, then something comes rolling in, then it pops in from this side, something comes rolling in. And in that fashion, it will look very smooth. We are going to animate the camera backwards until finally the can is fully in the camera. And we are going to transition, use that last frame as the first frame of our next animation. But I'll dive into that later in this video. First, we are going to make those animations. We've already got our plane set up. We've got our lighting, so we do not have to do anything fancy to get that to look right. So I'm going to grab my other two bottles right over there. I'm going to press Alt R to remove the rotation and I'm going to place it over here. This one will already be standing in its location. Bring it backwards somewhere over here and we've got our 60 frames. Now I want to make this pan whip seven frames. How do I know that? I am already playing around in the edit with the other shots that I've got and I, I literally just counted how many frames until the beat hits. And at that point, I want this camera to be standing still on this frame. So I'm going to use seven frames for the pan whip, which is right over here. Seven, seven frames. Select the camera and this is where we want to have it end. And now I'm going back to frame zero. I'm going to press RXX to scale it upon its, uh, I mean rotate it. And I'm going to bring it down like so. Location and rotation. And now it moves upwards and comes to a stop where we want it to begin. And our plane is not long enough. We're going to move the camera backwards. I'm going to take this, press G and X and make this longer. Uh, I want this to be a little bit closer. I think it's too far away, right over here. And I want this can to land in front of this can. So I'm going to delete the keyframes. So let me work in modeling mode for now. Alt R, I'm going to set it exactly on the plane, like this. Now I'm going to bring it forward and make sure that it's in a straight line, like so. Now it's probably not in the correct rotation. So I'm going to change the rotation and make sure that it shows our logo like this. So this is the end frame for our uh, orange bottle. Now, as you can see, the lighting is not very spectacular right over here, but we're going to change that later on. First, we're going to get the animation right. Then we'll do the lighting and make sure everything looks cool. I want to move this to approximately frame 17 and make it a duration of 10 frames, which is half a second. I like when it pops in quite quickly instead of slowly, because then you can see what is happening. You do not want to see what's happening. It must look like magic. Right over here, I'm going to press location, rotation, and skill by pressing I and adding a keyframe. I'm going back to frame seven. From the camera view, I am going to watch this, bring it upwards, slightly backwards, rotate it, S zero, I, location and rotation and scale. So what's happening? It's going to pop into existence. And then what we want to have happen is that it falls over to the side just a little bit. I'm going in, let's say 22, frame 22, which is about five frames further. I'm going to select this edge, shift S, cursor to select it, and change this to our 3D cursor pivot point, R, X, and rotate it like so. Add a rotation keyframe, it doesn't work. So why doesn't it work? Well, probably location, rotation, and scale. Yeah. So location, rotation, and scale. And now it's going to the side. And then I'm going to select this keyframe and copy it on frame 27. So now it is pop, pop. The way where it's coming from is not entirely where I want it to be. So I'm going to place it somewhere over here. Location, rotation, and scale, pop. 
and that looks already a lot better. So now it's coming into existence and we are going to change the animation with the graph editor once again. So going over into the object properties, first of all, we want to do the scale. So I'm going to lock everything and lock the scale, select all these scales, go over here and press dot. And now we have our scale right over here. Now I want it to be very fast in the beginning and you can already think for yourself, how can I do that? Well, it's going to be this figure again. Scaling in a lot faster. Pop. And it pops into existence. Pop. Very cool. Now I'm going into the rotation. I kind of like the way the location is handled already. So I'm going to leave the location locked. Open up our rotation. Go to the X rotation. And pop. Looks pretty good. The Y rotation is the one that we are going to be needing. So pop. Like so. Maybe we can increase it like such. So it's going like this and then it's skewing over to the side right here. I'm going to make this one free and have it be papa. Very cool. This one could be a little bit to the side. And I'm going to try and do the same for the C rotation. Is there any C rotation even? So first let's see what this does. I'm going to place this on individual centers, scale it on the x-axis. And this one should be slower. And have a look at that one. So the x location is looking like this. Let's see what we can do with it. Change the handle type to free, bring it upwards. So don't worry too much about this animation. We're going to obscure everything and uh, by rotating this one in while this one is still wobbling. So the end of the wobble doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't really matter that much. So I'm going to take this one, uh, going over into the timeline, delete these keyframes that we still have left, Alt R, go on to seven, make sure that it is going to stand in the same line that we wanted to have happen in. Now bring it down, make sure that it's properly aligned to the plane like so. And this is where we want to have it end straight away when this one is still wobbling. So this seems like the right location. When it all, when this one lands, this one should be in its location already. Location, rotation and scale. Let's say 12. I think 10 frames is going to be fine. Then we're going to bring this to the side and rotate it on its own axis. So change this pivot point to median. And let's see, I'm going to rotate it from this side, I, location, rotation and scale. And now it is located like that. And I don't think frame 12 is the best one to start at. So we're going to uh, have this one entirely on frame 24-ish. So 24. Yes. So now I'm going over into the graph editor, by the way, it's on frame, well, 10 and then on frame 24, so it's 14 frames, which is not even a second because a second is 24 frames. I'm going into the graph editor and here I'm going to open up our location. Well, we actually changed the location on the Y axis. So I'm going to close everything except for the Y location. Now, what do I want to have happen? I want it to come in quick and then as it slides because of the friction, it will slow down. So how do we do that? I think by now you already know, we're going to free this handle up make sure it has the freedom to move around. Now I'm going to bring this upwards and create this type of shape. So now it comes in quickly and slows down. Very cool. Then the other thing we need to do is change the C rotation. And those are basically the only things we have for this uh, specific render. So now uh, I want this to slow down over here. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to drag this one out and maybe it's a little bit too fast. So I'm going to drag this one out as well towards this side. Still too fast. I want it to slow down a lot quicker. So maybe we can do it like this. There you go. And now it's sliding into position slowly but surely. Maybe we can even make it a little bit less steep. No, I think this is the right way to do it. Maybe we can even drag it a bit more to the side. All right, so now this animation is done as well, it's sliding in the front while the other one is still falling. And that's why that final animation of the previous one doesn't really matter. Like this. 
I do think it is happening a bit too quickly. So I'm going over into the timeline, bring it over here and change the entire scale of this to frame 30. Yes, so now we can see the wobble and it's going into sliding into frame. Very good. I'm going to duplicate this one, bring it forward. Right now we are going to make the scale come from the left side and then the slide from the right side. And then we'll add our final can, which will be our transition can. Now I'm going to delete all the keyframes that it has. It shouldn't be moving anymore. I think we can use frame 30 to have it uh, stand here. Go over here, select this edge, cursor to select it by pressing shift S, press on zero. And now we can go over to this side, set this to median point and move this over, rotate it in whatever fashion you like. S, zero, I, location, rotation, and scale. And maybe we can place it a little bit higher. There you go. Now I'm going to set the pivot point to 3D cursor. R, X, move it like this, location, rotation, and scale. And up, it's going like that. Then we're going to take this keyframe and place it back. And now we've got our animation ready for the graph editor. So we're going into the graph editor, going to lock everything except for the skill. I'm going to select the skill and let's have a look at where our skill is located. Now, you know what I want to do? I want it to come popping in very fast. I'm going to change the handle type to free. I'm going to take this handle and bring it upwards like so. Pop. Pop. Very good. I think the C location is a little bit slow, so I'm going into the C location and I'm going to take this handle, change it to free and make sure that it falls down very quickly. Pa -pa. Now I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, I think that animation is fine. Now for the graph editor, I am going to unlock everything. I want to add one more because we've got a, a pop in, a slide, a pop in, and now we want another slide. So this slide came from this side, so the other one should come from this side. And then we will add our final uh, bottle. I am going to take this sliding one, duplicate it, and bring it forward like so. And now I want to delete the keyframes, which I'm going to do, and it shouldn't move around anymore. So this one is popping into existence and right here I want the slide animation to be done. So I'm going to select the location, rotation and scale, go back around, let's see, 12 frames and have it move from this side and set the pivot point to median, RC, and let's have it rotate. Yes, very good. So we're going into the graph editor. Now I'm going over to the, which location was this? The Y location. I'm going to close everything except for the Y location. And I want it to start fast and slow down because that's how friction works. So I'm going to make this handle very quickly at the beginning like this. And that looks pretty smooth. Now going into the C Euler rotation, I'm going to select that. And maybe we want this to happen quickly and then slow down as well. Why not? There you go, very nice. So this already looks pretty good. And now for the final uh, can, we can probably just take this one uh, because I want it to be the black can once again, or original can, duplicate it, bring it over here. It has no keyframes, so there's nothing going on. And I want to have it end exactly at this point. And for the final, animation, I think we could have it come popping in from the top. So this is on frame 45, I'm going to frame 35, I'm going to place it upwards, maybe give it a slight angle, S, zero, I, location and rotation. And now it pops into existence like that. Now, first things first, I am going to take the camera. I think we are a bit too far, so we should probably start closer and then move backwards. I'm going to delete these keyframes going forward, like right over here. And on frame seven, we should be there. And on frame one, uh, RXX, and we can change it like this. Uh, I'm going to place it like so, and it's going up. Then we have the animations happening. And what we want to do is have it go backward for the entirety of 48 frames, which is two seconds. And I'm going to place it backwards like so until we've reached our final destination. 
right there. And this is going to be a match cut. And we are going to do that later on, but this is what it looks like right now. So we can do the graph editor of this pop in. So let's go to the scale. Let's grab the scale. I already know what I want to do. I'm going to set it to free. I want it to pop in quicker and pop. And it pops in like that. Pop. Right here on frame 48, we are done. And maybe the camera move can be a lot smoother. So let's go into the camera and go to the graph editor. We are moving this on the X location. So I'm going to lock everything except for the X location. And let's see what we can do with this. We can change the handle type to free. And now maybe we can move it like this. Like that. Pop, pop, pop. Now the only thing I am having problems with is that this one is a bit too slow. So we are going to in the timeline and move it. And now we have to change our locks, of course, as always. Go into the timeline and move it backwards. So now it falls in at the right time. So I'm going to set it to frame 41 at which it ends. Pop. And then we're just going to have it play out like that. And that's a two second animation. It looks like this. Pop, pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. Very cool. Very cool looking. Uh, now, one thing we should do is probably change the colors of some of these and because they are all blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm heading over to Canva color wheel. And in the Canva color wheel, I am going to set this to Tetradic and I have used blue and orange. So I'm going to set it to blue and orange. And as you can see, a certain type of pink color and green color will fit nicely in this scene and will be a logical color to have. So we are going into the shader editor, copy it by clicking on this copy button. Then right over here, we can change the color of our bottle. I'm going to make this one uh, like the purplish or pinkish color. Then I'm going to select this one. Let's have it duplicate it, change it to green. And let's see what that looks like. Pop, pop, pop. Chats. And it's very fast. Pop, pop, pop. And it might be too fast. And if that is the case, select all the keyframes at once, then scale it twice. So if I just grab this one, for example, the final part, S2, it will scale it by two and it will be a lot slower. But I am going to have to judge that after viewing the render because I like fast renders. Bam, bam, bam. Very cool. Now, the only thing left that we should do is add some more lighting. I am not going to overcomplicate this at all. I am simply going to take this one and this one and bring it over here. Turn those off. Yes, as you can see, it's quite dark now. But then when we turn this on, we get a nice looking light on our cans. So you've learned how to make a professional rotation animation. We've used the scale pop-in effect once again. And we also dolly zoomed the camera backwards in order to get this energetic look. In the next part of this free masterclass, you're going to learn how to make the camera pendulum swing, which is a very cool animation. So click here to watch that video next.